I don't know that the deck is that good against D shift either. So I'm like, uh, yeah, it, yeah. things. We'll have to see. I feel I feel like it can be good against D shift, uh, but it looks like D shift got banned out. So Piao knowing that he doesn't want to play against that deck and feels like he has a better chance against the Sword and the Dragon deck. So that being said, do you think that Red is more of an advantage now or less an advantage because he doesn't have his D shift to play with? Yeah, uh, good ban coming in from the uh, for the D shift because that that's going to be really hard to beat with the Tempo Forest and the, especially the Aegis deck. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah. He just not known for beating D shift very easily. <laughs> very late game deck, very hard to win against D shift. So yeah, great ban here. Um, so what do you think about this matchup? So we know what Red's doing, we know what Piao is doing. Do you think that there's any difference in the fact that this is PDK instead of regular ramp against PTP? Uh, PDK is, I believe, much better against the early game of the Horus deck because he gets to play Fire Lizards. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume he's still got. Uh, like, like I know, I know. Recently, people have been cutting Matildas and Fire Lizards, but I think Red has still got a couple in there. Uh, we and... we haven't seen a cut of them yet in competitive play. We still see the Matildas. We still see the Fire Lizards. People, at least at on this stage, have been have been keeping them in their deck. Interesting. Uh, it, it's something that I expect to see soon then. Uh, why do you say that? Uh, why why gone are the Fire Lizards and the Matildas? Just slower format or? The more heavy you go in the mirror matchups, uh, it feels like the better your odds are because the actual PDK engine is more of a diversion for your other threats. Sure, um, sure. I mean, usually you're winning with like Fortes and Genesis Dragons exactly. or Zeus's or whatever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we are seeing an aggressive start from Piao here um, with not... A great answer yet, but of course PDK being online next turn to help shore that up. It's looking pretty good for Red here, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Cool health. And PDK on next turn, I don't think there's a good answer for that. Not in the hand. Uh, as we know, Piao isn't playing any high-costed cards in his deck beyond a Fairy Beast, so he doesn't have Dance of Deaths, he doesn't have like great ways to deal with all of these non-attack followers. Of course, Forte can die to Elf Child Maze or Airbound Barrages, but like you said, PDK, this 5 toughness, maybe even possibly 7 toughness, almost impossible to clear off the board. Yeah. Wow, Red is going to be very unhappy to see that point of power go to the Goblin, I think. Uh, because I think the play he wanted to make this turn was to evolve the PDK into the Goblin, and putting it at 3 health instead of 4 allows Airbound Barrage to clear it. Absolutely, and it looks like it's the play that he's probably going to make, though. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah, this, this so PDK actually is opening this, yeah. Going to get answered. Can be killed. Just talked about how it couldn't be, but Airbound Barrage being able to kill this even after an Evo by setting up. So again, Piao just showing that he knows what he needs to do. I like the kit. I like it. So... Yeah, that is true. And you said, so, a lot of changes you've been thinking about for PDK are with the mirror in mind, specifically. Do you think that the mirror is going to be more prevalent this time? Like, do you think that Dragon is just going to be a mainstay this entire season? Do you think it's going to fade away at all? Like, what do you what do you think is the future of Dragon right now? Yeah, I think, I think PDK is currently the strongest deck you can play in the Dragon class. It, it just does a lot of things very well. It defends early game. It... Uh, it has a very strong late game. It's hard to deal with. Uh, like PDK just adds another threat, like to the list of Muhammad and Genesis and Forte. That it just you need a specific kind of answer, and it constantly asks questions like, "Can you deal with this? How about this?" And then like if you miss a step, you just die. Right. And that's the kind of deck that you want to be playing. I like it too because uh, before it was like Saha Quill or you know Wrathrake or just some like big doofs 
you know, all the way up so that you could finally get to your Bahamas and stuff. But now, like, unassumingly, you get to play cards like Ivory Dragon, which help you cycle even, where you really didn't want to play that before. Um, it just lets you play all these cool, unique cards, even three Scythers again in Dragon to help with, like, Bahamut Wars and things like that. I think it just opens up Dragon to do way more than it ever could before. So I, I think you're right. I think PDK is the best version of Dragon at the moment, um, by far. I think it's great. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, we're probably gonna see a Bahamut slam here. Uh, yes. Pretty easy, Bahamut. <laughs> now, Pixie Mischief can answer it, but that does, that doesn't really answer it. Just kind of gives you an extra turn. Yep. Yeah. Uh... You get to you get to send it back to hand. It'll come back down. It'll destroy the board again. <laughs> yep. Bahamut things. Yeah, and unfortunately, Piao isn't at enough shadows to even activate uh, a path of purgatory, even if he altered fates into it. So is going with the plan to just bounce the Bahamut for now, just to give himself another turn. Okay. Not the worst. Does have some sort of roach combo in there. I don't know if it's good enough, though. Let's count. He's got two roach combo. It's not 16 damage. I believe it's only 14 damage he can deal next turn, at most. Yeah, without any way of generating zero cost, this deck doesn't really piece together the most aggressive roach plays. You kind of need right. to get a lot of chip damage in there. Without any chip, this Bahamut... I don't know if even the Bahamut is necessary now. You probably just go, like, Sybil, Scyther, or something like that. Maybe even Dragon Oracle first to draw into PDK. Yeah, you can totally play it slow here and just wait to Bahamut their, their uh, path to Purgatories away. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's choosing to do here. I like it. And choosing to put the Staircase of Heaven into play, I would imagine, this turn as well. No, okay. Saving it. Okay. Uh, setting up Lethal. Not also good. Yep, also good. Yeah, and I don't think anywhere close to lethal anymore, especially after the civil heal. And again, no path to purgatory to kind of answer the board. So realistically, it's just fairy beast to kind of extend. But I really don't know how Piao wins this game. Yeah, it's looking really rough for him. I imagine fairy beast and using a roach to clear, but that removes most of his like win conditions. <laughs> right. I think I he has to the... keep the roach and pray. Yeah. Because next turn, okay, so if he waits one more turn and he has full roach combo with seven, that means he can play two spells before. Actually, that's only 14. So actually, he couldn't deal 14 this turn. Even next turn, his max is 14. So still not anywhere close to 19. And 20 if the Sybil remains in play. So I think Piao's in a, yeah, too much of a rough spot to come back out of this game. Yeah. Uh, he, his deck just doesn't have the ability to crush PDK's early game or outlast PDK in a long drawn out game and we're just seeing it here. He, he just doesn't have the tools to win. So if you were playing PTP, what are tools that you would put into it to kind of like offset this deficit that we see? Like would you be playing Elven Princess Mage? Would you be playing, you know, any of the new cards like that you can think of, like maybe even extending the curve a little bit more besides just one and two drops? Is there anything that you would do to kind of shore up its weaknesses? Uh, the card that I've found strongest in this type of deck is Venus. Uh, because she, like, yes, the amulet can be killed by Bahamut, but if you just have Venus and Harvest Festival on the board generating value every single turn, it, you can eventually hit the point where you just threaten Roche Lethal with all the nonsense in your hand, and uh, that's and that's a way to win the game, but this this matchup is just rough. Yeah. The, Any the Anything with Bahamut is just going to feel good against PTP in general. Unless you get the crazy start that Piao got last match, where he, he literally just out-aggressed Ramp Dragon with, with a perfect kind of hand. It's pretty nice to see. Yeah. I okay. believe he could trigger PTP this turn if he wanted to. Let me... Maybe not. Even even if that is the option, of course, he already knows the Bahamut's in hand because he Pixie Mischiefed it. So yeah, I believe he can activate PTP, but it's just going to feel bad. Maybe he's got to force it down, though, and just find an answer to Bahamut. I don't know. It's possible that if he couldn't conserve enough resources out of hand after playing the PTP, he can assemble 14 damage from Roaches. Mm -hmm. And that's probably actually the plan because Bahamut won't kill him. So yeah, if he can activate PTP, get the 6 damage in this turn, 
both of the Sybils being expended for red here, so none after the PTP, he could actually just have a lethal next turn, but decides to go with the Fairy Beast instead. Yeah, this is, you know, uh, he, I think he's just a little bit worried about storm damage coming up, but he's going to eat 10 damage at least, and then mm -hmm. potentially more out of hand. I don't mind this line, though. If there isn't lethal found here for red, this might be a line that Piao has to win the game, uh, specifically with how you said, just activate PTP with as limited resources as possible and then set up a Roach Lethal after the Bahamut's played to answer the PTP. So, Piao, in a way, finding uh, a, a route to victory that we just didn't see earlier. We just thought he was dead, but he has a real chance now, especially with no Fortes or Genesis Dragons or anything in the hand of Red to kind of finish this game up. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine the plan for Red here is to clear with Breath of the Salamander and then uh, save PDK for Lethal next turn. Mm-hmm. Let's see, he might Scyther this turn to get some extra damage in. Dragon Summoner, okay. Okay, finds a Forte. Great draw. Okay. Forte's a good card. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad one. So yeah, Forte plus Scyther will mean victory regardless now. Unfortunate for Piao. I think, I think again, Piao... I, Red obviously showing that he knows how to play Dragon, and we know Red's a good player. Piao being a new player, just showing that he knows how to play Shadowverse. Like, this is awesome to see a new player. Like, if now that we know that Piao is actually going to be on the, the, the track for this season, are you afraid of this guy? Do you think he offers something that we haven't seen before? Do you think he's nothing? You know, how do you feel about him? Uh, Piao's play has been really impressive. Like, I, I don't think... Uh, any new player could have come up with such a great line that gives him a chance in a in a really really horrible matchup. Yeah, like you know, like he's the only he he's only just barely short of killing Red here. Red just had to get the storm that turn, and he did. But you know, it's it's maybe... interesting too because he didn't scyther for the extra damage to maybe try to end with PDK or something like that. He went for the dragon summoner and pulled the forte. So like his kind of off-the-wall play really paid off there, and I think that's probably what he was looking for, was something like a Forte or a Genesis Dragon off of that. Yeah. It, it would have been pretty hard to get the damage that he needed off of just PDK, so he needed to either get uh, a cheap follower or a Forte, and Forte he is the card he got, and Forte is going to win him the game. Yep. Yeah, I, I still think very impressive line from both players. Both both of them showing they're exactly where they need to be in the finals of today, so. Yeah, absolutely. Both it. players they deserve to be here. What about IC Stars? Were you sad to see him go? I know I was. I was rooting for IC Stars. Yeah, it, I, I didn't get to see him uh, in the Losers finals, but he... It's just unfortunate, I think. Uh, he He's just slightly unfavored. All the men, Almost all the Mana Surge players today are on the same lineup, except IC Stars brought Daria instead of D-Shift, which makes sure. him unfavored against the other Mana Surge players. You must just make sense. a little bit mostly, mostly because Daria is still up in the air, even with Mystic Ring. So let's talk about Daria for a second. Do you think Daria is any better because of Mystic Ring and the new Calling card, or do you think it's much the same where it's kind of just luck-based and whatever? Okay, so I tested Mystic Ring and Daria for eight games. Mm -hmm. After not drawing Daria in six games, I came to the conclusion that I'd rather just, you know, not put a card into my deck that only does things if I draw the card <laughs> like that wins me the game anyways. <laughs> That's fair. So, uh, That's yeah, fair. I don't, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, would you, would you recommend anybody to play Daria? Do you think its new tools make it any better, or do you think it's literally just the same deck it was, and they probably should keep it on the shelf? I think Daria is pretty much the same deck it was, but that doesn't mean you need to put it on the shelf. It's, I mean, it, it, neutral's got nerf, right? And yes. So, like, just because the deck didn't get anything in the last expansion doesn't mean that. It's not good right now. Uh, as okay. to whether or not it's actually good, I'm not too sure. I don't really think it's a great choice against Agro Sword 
or primary. I'm definitely not against aggro sword. No. <laughs> No. PDK, I feel like it could Daria on a turn that makes it really awkward for PDK, but you have to be in, like, the perfect set of circumstances, right? You have to be doing, like, your turn 4, turn 5 Daria thing for it even to matter at PDK, so... Yeah, and, and I, I just don't think that's consistent enough. Right. So you heard it here first. Don't play Daria right now, and maybe not even Mystic Ring. Hey, I, I'm not saying Daria, Daria is one of the fun decks in this game, in my experience. It, it's a, it's it, a, it was my favorite deck for a long period of time. It was one of my favorite decks. There are a few feelings as good as going from an unplayable hand to dropping every single card and then drawing five. Like, nothing compares to that. It, it's just so good. <laughs> Alright, so let's hop into this game here. So, MS Red with his aggro deck showing exactly what you were talking about. Just this aggro deck being absolutely insane. Uh, as far as the early game is concerned against this forest deck. Yeah, this this is looking pretty rough for Kyo here. Uh, like I said, if, if you don't get Brambles in this matchup, your fairies are outclassed really, really fast, and mm -hmm. it leaves you kind of hard up to answer all these cards coming out of Sword. Especially cards like Council of Card Knights, which we don't see yet, but that mm -hmm. card is just straight unbeatable as Tempo Forest. Yeah, just so much value out of a single card so early in the game. And Fairy Beast not being able to be played yet, and Piao not actually able to clear the entire board here, is going to just mean Doom. He's got the Juliet in hand with an Evo. There's going to be at least one follower that survives here, so this is just it. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad. I think he has to nature's... I think he has to evolve his Fairy, use it to attack, and then bounce it back to his hand if he wants to win, uh, have a chance to survive. And hope to get an Airbound Barrage. Yeah, that's the only way. And not letting himself do that, so... Oh, he didn't... Yeah, he didn't go for it. He needed, he needed to draw something like a May. And oh. he got it! And he got it! Oh! oh my mission is complete. Uh, that's gonna feel I bad, Piao. Haven't seen too many mistakes from Piao, but wow. that seems like one to me. Unfortunately, wouldn't have mattered with the Roundtable Assembly top deck anyway. But, yeah, that's a very slight mistake. Wouldn't have mattered, but that's the only one. But he made it to the finals anyway, and Red taking it down. Congratulations, Red, and congratulations, Piao. There it is. Awesome stuff. Man, just Red takes first place in the qualifier, and I know he's been trying for a long time. You know, ever since oh, season yeah. one, he's been playing and playing and playing and just hasn't been able to find the right kind of deck lineups and hasn't been kind of getting the right matchups and he's finally done it and he had a fantastic run in the on the winner's side of the bracket